Another issue that we've been aware of and we're working on is the fact that poor and minority communities are suffering most. The numbers in this state are not nearly as bad as the disparity in any other, in many other states, but any disparity is bad, uh, and that's what we have been focusing on here. We uh, did surveys and data that show if you look at the 21 zip codes with the highest number of hospitalizations for COVID, 20 of those 21 have greater than average African American or Latino populations, 20 of 21 of those zip codes. Uh, so there's no doubt that it is a problem. And you can, we've mapped this and you can see exactly where uh, people are coming from as they're walking into hospitals. Part of the new system that we've implemented through this is hospitals report nightly how many cases they have, where they come from, and we can now literally map the number of people and where they're coming from throughout the state. Uh, and then when you look into uh, that information, especially in Brooklyn and the Bronx, it's clear that uh, the communities are heavier minority population and heavier low-income population. And when you compare that with the overall city rate, it makes the same point that hospitalization rate, infection rate among the minority community, among lower income communities, is higher than the average. Uh, unfortunately, in a cruel irony, this is often the case. When you look at disasters, emergencies, I don't care if they're hurricanes, floods, whatever they are, uh, cruel irony is the poorest people pay the highest price. I've seen this across the country when I was at HUD. Uh, you're there to take care of a flood or a storm. It's the poorer communities that get wiped out first, right? It's the lowland. It's the land that tends to flood that has the lower value. And that's where the lower community, lower income community tends to locate. Uh, so. Uh, we understand why, we understand the health disparities, we understand comorbidities, but we also understand it's just not right. It is just not right. And uh, we have to address it. We saw the same thing in Hurricane Katrina. Those people who were on rooftops were not, not the wealthy white part of the community. They were predominantly minority. They were predominantly low income. Those rooftops very often were public housing. So this has been the pattern. Flint, Michigan, the people who were drinking water that was poisoned, they were low-income minority populations. If you even go back to 1927, the Great Mississippi Flood, where does the Mississippi, Mississippi Flood? It floods the lowlands. It floods lower-income communities. Uh, we get it, but we have to break the cycle. New York, we're going right at uh, finding the reasons for the disparity and resolving them. We are doing more testing in low-income communities and communities of color. We're doing testing in public housing aggressively, <clears throat> excuse me, partnering with Ready Responders, uh, which is a group which is doing great work. We've delivered PPE equipment, masks, over one million, hand sanitizer, et cetera, to public housing. And today, we're launching a new initiative, again, to address exactly this, which is to expand access to testing in low-income communities and communities of color. Uh, we're partnering with Northwell Health, which is the largest health system in New York, uh, and they're going to set up 22 additional testing sites at churches in predominantly minority communities. This is uh, a different kind of partnership. It's a creative, but it's, it's necessary. Uh, we're working with both churches individually and association of churches and Northwell. Northwell will provide the testing in churches in uh, lower income communities and communities of color. The churches will help us outreach to the community 
to get people to come in and explain why it's important that people come in and get tested, and Northwell uh, will do the testing. We have 24 sites uh, in the New York City area. Some will be opening the week of May 12th. Uh, some will be opening the second week of May 19th. But uh, you see the coverage when we add the uh, network of churches is very broad, again, focused on these communities that we want to reach out to. Uh, these 24 new sites will be working with the current network of sites, and we've already located many testing sites in minority communities and low-income communities. Uh, but when you put the church-based sites together with the drive-through sites, together with the walk-in testing sites, and our sites at public housing, the coverage will be extensive. So the sites will be there. We now need New Yorkers to go get the tests. And I know, you know, I do this with people all day long. Uh, I feel fine, I feel fine. You can feel fine and test positive for COVID. You can, you can be asymptomatic and still have the COVID virus. Well, if I feel fine, what's the difference? Because you can give it to someone else who will not feel fine. And you can give it to a person who's more in a vulnerable community uh, uh, group, older person, person with an underlying illness, and they could be in serious trouble. So you want to know if you have it, not just for yourself, but so you don't communicate it to anyone else. Uh, I want to thank uh, our partners who have been working on this. It's exactly what we want to do all through this situation. We said we don't want to just deal with this virus. We don't want to just replace what was there. We actually want to make sure that we build back better than before. I understand that this inequity, this disparity exists. I understand it's existed for decades. I understand it exists all across the country, uh, but not New York, not New York. It shouldn't be here.